wanted to show you some apps that I have worked on that kind of cover diff some different areas. Um, I'm very into game design and game development, so I'll be showing some apps that I've made um, that are for, for, for fun for me, but um, they're also um, apps that I've made money on um, doing these games. I have had some uh, companies um, have me make uh, some apps as well. Um, and I wanted to show you some uh, prototypes that I'm working on. Uh, hopefully they will uh, work okay in here. Um, I'm working on apps that are, um, the prototypes I'm working on are audio only and they're made, um, I'm working on accessibility um, for people who are visually impaired. So these are apps that would be um, only audio and stuff like that. So I'll, I don't have extremely lot of slides or anything. I kind of want to show you other things I've made and talked about them and then you can ask me questions and I'll do my best to uh, answer whatever you, you throw at me. So um, this is my paste email. Um, if you, this is my artistic ability right here. Everybody, I did that myself. It's an exact replication. I'm actually wearing this exact outfit right now. But um, so if you want to reach out to me, if you like this um, keynote or if you didn't like keynote or something, um, you can reach out to me at my paste um, email address. So the, um, these games that I've made for fun, uh, one of them is named Alex, and the other one is called Junkdo. And Alex is a programming puzzle game. It's named after my nephew. My sister said he was the coolest 12-year-old to have an app uh, named after him. And my target age range for this was around 10 to 12, maybe like a pretty brilliant 10-year-old um, up to 12. And um, this app is being used by some after-school coding uh, clubs and programs in the US and the UK. I got to um, Skype with some children across the pond, as they say, and um, kind of tell them, talk them about my game and game development and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll do a demo of this in a second. Um, this is another game I developed. I was um, working on a minimalist design. I wanted to have something that was kind of chill and I wanted to work on a game that you only needed one finger to play. And it's actually um, pretty challenging when, um, when a lot of people start to get into game development, they right away want to make something that has 36 buttons on it or needs an Xbox controller. It's actually kind of challenging to give yourself a constraint of developing something that you only need one finger to play. So let me give you a demo of uh, some of these games. Made a little my stuff folder for today, so I'm organized. Okay, so uh, this is Alex. There might be sound, but maybe it doesn't work. Okay, hey, there he's hi. Um, so the idea here is that the idea is that you want to get this um, robot to this other platform, and there are some commands down here, forward, left, and right, and basically, instead of controlling it as you go, you have to give it a little program to run. So you say forward, 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 and then you hit run program, and it kind of runs your little instructions there. And the idea of this was to kind of provide a game that required, I didn't, quick, I didn't think very quickly, I guess, I took a little too long. Um, the idea was to create a game where you kind of need to think ahead and get the idea of writing some kind of little routines here and stuff like that. So, this is kind of a puzzle game for programming and a little educational thing. And one thing I want to show is that um, if you get into game design or game development, um, so on this screen, for instance, I'm teaching a new mechanic, which is a sliding platform. But when you're introducing new stuff in games, you want to do it in an environment that's kind of safe and kind of familiar. So here my uh, person will learn about this kind of sliding platform and stuff. I run, thanks. Um, they'll learn about this sliding platform and stuff like that. So, um, this game um, I actually developed by for just kind of fun and just because I wanted to give my I wanted to try to get my nephew into programming, which he's not. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to try to get him into programming. But what's kind of great is that it kind of took off as this um, kind of like I said, like an after school for that sixth grade. Um, coding club kind of a thing and, and stuff like that. So, goodbye. Thanks. This other game I made um, here, kind of show you what else I do here. I play level nine, I guess. I'm kind of playing upside down. So here I wanted to make a game that only had one mechanic. So the only mechanic in this game is jumping, 
and you need to, well, I'm actually not that great. Um, so the idea here was just to create something very, very, very simple in a game here. So, wow, this is really hard to play sideways. Let me go to the main. I'm going to choose an easier look. <laughs> so, like I said, it's actually, um, when you do game development, it's actually sometimes challenging to have constraints. So here, I just wanted one button is all you need to do to play this kind of game here. It's kind of a little simple thing. Um, and these are, um, I built these using, I'm getting lost in my thing. I built them using Unity. Oops. Okay, cool. um, I built them using uh, Unity, which is a game engine. Uh, and that game engine uses uh, the C Sharp language. It's very similar to Java in a way. It's like everything you like about Java without stuff you don't like. And um, Unity is a game engine that oh. lets you create um, games, but then you can write your code one time, and then you can put it on an iPhone, you can put it on Android, you can put it on desktop, you can do a WebGL build so it plays in your browser, and you can even build stuff for Xbox and other things with it. So, um, uh, so that's uh, that. So I had, um, I wanted to show you some apps that I've made where people, like, um, you know, where people reached out to me uh, to develop them directly. They weren't something that came out of my own brain. Um, I was kind of given designs or given stuff to do, and I just kind of implemented them in some way. So the uh, first one I'm going to show you here is this app called Complete Cajon One. Um, this is for this amazing percussionist named uh, David Cookerman, and essentially this guy has this crazy library of DVDs that he had for a while. And the problem is I don't even own a DVD player anymore, and so is not a lot of other people, right? So what he was contracting me to do is to take his DVDs and convert them to be something that's, that works on an iPad and stuff like that, you know, so that they work on people's um, computers and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of um, had to kind of rebuild the menus and um, there's a sheet music PDF viewer and some other things. I'll show you this in a minute. This guy is phenomenal, by the way. The other app, um, probably one of the not most least terribly exciting apps I guess I made. Um, I had a pharmaceutical company where I developed this app for them. And basically the purpose of this app is that if you're a salesperson, you have this app and you meet with a doctor. And if you've ever gone into a doctor's office and there's all types of cards and advertisements and things, um, this salesperson basically places the order for this stuff to come to the doctor and it goes in those little things you see sitting on their desk and stuff like that. Um, what's really interesting about this is um, it's a privately distributed app. It's not in the App Store. There's a whole separate um, thing for getting apps that are just for your sales force and stuff like that. So I will give you a demo of those apps. So um, this is the Cajon app. Um, and it was basically just a really simple menu of tutorials and extras and notations and stuff like that. And if you go to these tutorials, um, you can pick up, uh, get some of these videos going. Is there sound? Oh, the sound doesn't work. That's all right. So um, the idea here is that you can kind of um, skip through the different lessons. And you can watch these videos um, as part of this app. And then he kind of demonstrates um, how to play Cajon. It's a really great DVD, by the way. He shows all the basic hits, stuff like that. And then there's also available, I think there's some uh, music notation and other things inside of this app. And there's some links to his other websites and other stuff that he's made. It was actually a really fun thing to make. So um, this is this other app that I made for a um, this uh, pharmaceutical company. And basically, the idea is that um, you can kind of get a better view of some of these cards. And this is all about allergies and stuff like that. And the idea is that if I'm a salesperson, I sit with you and I have my iPad and I um, can um, you know select how many things you want, put in your address and I can send out some orders and I can see, um, I can look at the uh, pending orders and all that kind of uh, stuff like that. So 
Um, like I said, this app, um, someone gave me the design, and then I just implemented the design. Um, so this communicates with like a web service to submit the orders and, um, and stuff like that. So um, basically, um, if you're curious, um, I have a, a friend of mine um, who brings me a lot of these very strange, uh, very strange things. So if you're if you're curious of like where I get some of these projects from or how I price them out or that kind of thing, that's something I can uh, talk about. If you email me, I can explain some of that stuff as well. So I want to go into my stuff for purpose. So I um, have recently got into. Um, uh, prototyping some ideas for apps for people who are visually impaired and these this these are audio only apps and I am hoping that my if I can get the audio to work on here maybe we'll see so the first one is called um, the captain's orders and the idea behind this game is this is actually a game but the idea is that it's an audio only game and if you've, you've watched Star Trek before or seen something like Star Trek before, okay, the idea is that you say words like raise the shields, fire the torpedoes and stuff like that. And then I got some uh, voice actors um, to help me with this prototype, um, some other people I know. And I worked on the audio um, being spatial. So the idea is that if I say uh, raise the shields and someone says aye aye captain, I can use a regular stereo pair of headphones, but it sounds like the person's coming in front of me in some way or behind me in some way. So the idea is to um, present the audio in a way that you, you feel like when you hear that voice come to you, it's like that person's sitting there, that person's sitting there, that voice is there, and that voice is there. I, um, You know what I'm going to do? I'm kind of curious. Hang on a second. I'm going to unplug this for a second and see if it plays with it unplugged. Greetings, Captain. Okay, cool. Set course for beta system. Cause laid in, Captain. Engage. Engaging warp drive. <laughs> So again, this is, um, you can't really hear out of the stereo speaker, sir, but the idea is that you're hearing the sounds kind of around you in a way to help kind of present it in like a, like a real environment, I guess, in some way. Stuff like that. Raise shields? <laughs> I just want an excuse to say raise shields, really. Um, so the, um, so that, that's one. This is, again, another game kind of thing. Come back. Now, <laughs> that was my computer science way. Um, so this next thing that I was working on is something for museum accessibility. And the idea um, for this prototype, I'm gonna demo it on my phone actually. The idea for this thing that I'm working on is if, um, the idea was to make it so that somebody could simply just walk around a museum and then when they came by something, it would tell them what was going on. So um, what I did, it's like, when, when you weren't here, I set up a little, um, this is a little estimote, it's a proximity sensor. And the idea is that each one of these kind of things has a unique ID number, and I can tell how far away I am. I don't know I'm to the left or to the right, but I know I can say, am I a foot away? Am I three feet away? Am I less than three feet away? That kind of thing. So I put one here, and I put another one here, okay? And the idea is to, um, if this was a museum in some way, maybe this um, device is you know, behind a, a, a painting, or maybe it's at the base of something and stuff like that. So let's, um, everyone just imagine this is um, the museum of something, okay? And then um, I'm going to load up my demo app, which um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, there you are. Okay, so the idea is when I get within a certain range of one of these devices, you can pretend that this was some fabulous painting of something or some other thing like that. Okay, 
right, so I am going to just kind of be walking around. So I'm not going to touch anything on my phone. I'm just going to be walking around this museum with my speaker on so you can hear it. So I'm just kind of walking around. A little closer. You are standing next to example one. This piece created in 2019 as example of <laughs> right, so, and some more info. So pretty cool, right? So um, so it's pretty neat. I, of course, recorded uh, these myself. That's my voice. <laughs> it's always weird hearing, hearing your voice recorded. Okay, so that one's over here, right? So let's say I was strolling around and I came by something else here. This is example two, created during the beta test period. Example information, example <laughs> information. Cool, right? So um, the idea here, like I mentioned, was to um, work on accessibility by using audio and then using um, location uh, tracking and stuff like that um, with the app. Um, these are called estimotes, if you're uh, curious about them. Um, you can, um, they, they use a, on the iPhone, you have something called iBeacon which is the um, protocol for doing uh, this. It's not Bluetooth, it's a, it's a different kind of protocol. So these can work up to maybe 20 feet away or so, 30 feet away. And if you had um, a bunch of these in a the room, like four of them, you could use that information to figure out where someone is in the room using trilateration, if you were curious. So, anyway. so um, but the idea behind, like I said, this was, um, uh, again, I was just working with um, ideas of accessibility and stuff like that. So um, that's my uh, brief keynote on some of the stuff I've worked on, some of the stuff I've done, and um, what I'm up to next and stuff like that, What's, what I'm interested in. And again, um, my name is Carmine Gaida, and this is my email address. And I'm happy, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer some questions. Yes? Um, how long did it take you to get your first um, freelance here? Wow. Um, I've been doing web development for like 20 years um, so someone um, who um, some of these people who knew me from web development were like we need apps now so some of that was um was stuff you know something like that okay. not at the, at the, not, it wasn't a helpful answer <laughs> I, I, a lot of these people I already knew okay. um, my what what what's worked for me with getting because I like I said a lot of my work has been freelance what's worked for me is connecting with companies or people who don't do what I do. So I have someone, um, their company does network security and computer security stuff. They don't make apps, they don't make websites, they don't make whatever. But eventually their clients say, do you know someone, you know, do you, can you take care of our website or do this? And they're like, no, but I know someone phenomenal, you know? So if, you know, sometimes connecting with, you can help that person look good by recommending you, you know, and doing a good job on that thing. So I, I would, um, for me, that's been, like, I'm not an amazing salesperson and stuff like that. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm good at, like, me, you know, talking to people, at, you know, in, in person and stuff. So I'm not good at calling people, cold calling, you know, that kind of stuff. So for me, I connect with people who are good at that stuff and let them kind of do that kind of work and stuff like that. You want to send me any questions and stuff? Sure. Um, going back to like how you said like about networking. Mm -hmm. So when you made the audio mm -hmm. for the for the uh, for the for the on visual mm -hmm. you can't see, what were some of the challenges you had? Like, because I understand like when you have to create depth, that's mm -hmm. a lot of like sound mm -hmm. understanding. And, like, how did you collaborate with people that are specialized in like in hearing and stuff like that? Um. So you mean for the museum bit or no for the for the no, for the spatial visual thing um, I'm well I'm, I'm also a musician so I've done a lot of audio I've done a lot of audio stuff and mixing and making recording my own stuff and everything like that so I already like had some knowledge about uh, you know recording and, and, that, and uh, doing, doing that kind of thing um, I because I'm a musician I know people who have other weird talents <laughs> you know <laughs> okay. so I was like talking to people I'm like hey do you mind <laughs> you know so I have some friends who do voice stuff so they were they were nice enough to give me like four or five words here uh, here or there you know I reached out to some youtuber who uh, I just kind of liked, and I was like, "Hey, can you do a couple of uh, uh, lines for me and stuff like that?" So he, could do, you know, did some of his other stuff. Um, the um, the um, museum stuff. Um, I have a colleague who does some work with the Museum of Natural History, 
and he was working on some other completely unrelated project to them. And then I got into a conversation with him about accessibility and other stuff. And we were talking about um, designs. My, a friend of mine designs museum exhibits. And he was talking about making things accessible to people um, and wheelchairs and other kind of things like that. So we kind of got into this talk. And then that kind of got me. Um, he kind of uh, you know asked me about something. So this is what I. I actually texted this person like three, a couple of days ago, and I'm like, "Hey, this thing works, this thing works, by the way." Uh, so um, yeah, so um, if you're curious, um, the Guggenheim and some other places use uh, this kind of system um, for their audio stuff like that. The other idea I was hoping to do with this is to create something that's very inexpensive. Um, if you're if you're a very small museum, you know they create these audio devices. You can walk around, and they have you hit a number when you see something, and it plays a sound. But for me, everyone has the phones already, and they have everything. So you don't need to, all you need to do is get these devices and just, you know, set up some database and some other stuff. You know, mm -hmm. anyone have any other stuff? I'm happy to say anything or do anything. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I check my email like a million times a day, um, so I'm more than happy to answer um, any questions. Um, I've been doing this stuff for a uh, long time now. Um, and like I said, I've also run some businesses and other things, so I can answer some questions regarding uh, some of that stuff if you're just kind of curious of when you get out of school, what, you know, how do you get into doing this stuff and getting on um, this kind of work and stuff like that. So, all right, cool. All right, everyone, thanks.